Hello, everyone. This is Special Olympics Montana Sports Director Scott Held, and today we are going to be going through um, how to fill out the 2021 Fall Basketball Challenge preliminary and final scores form, which hopefully you see on your screen right now. Now, during this meeting, if I am looking off the screen, it's because I'm looking at the larger screen while I'm well with the actual recording is running on my laptop. So we're just going to go ahead and walk through this. It's pretty simple. Um, at least I think it's pretty simple because, you know, we, we've kind of put it together here. So hopefully you guys agree with us and this is something um, we can put together and you guys can put together without too many, too many issues. If at any point you have questions that this video does not answer, or you just want to talk to someone at Special Olympics, feel free to give me a call at 406-216-5327 or send me an email at sheld at somt.org and I will help you guys get this sucker filled out right away. Okay, so we're going to get going ahead here with the 2021 Fall Basketball Challenge preliminary and final scores form. Now, as you can see, this is the main page of the, uh, the main page of the document. Now, right away, just like with all registration forms or roster forms we've done in the past, we will be asking you guys for your delegation name. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill out an example here. So delegation name, we will say the Helena Mountains. You know, that's a real fun name or something, right? But we'll be the Helena Mountains. Okay. LPC name, go Scott Hild. LPC phone number, you know, let's say 406. Eight six seven five three zero nine. All right. LPC email. Of course, you'd put an email and your mailing address. Now, this mailing address is something that will be used for thermometers. One, if you need them, or possibly for awards down the road, which is why we're asking for this. Um, you know, as this is a state competition, but we can't get together in person. We're hoping to be shipping out awards at the end of the season. Um, so go ahead and put in a good shipping address. Ideally, that isn't a PO, PO box because they have trouble. Uh, the post office has trouble shipping PO, uh, you know, larger packages with awards to PO boxes. So if a PO box is all you have, let's try to find another physical address. But we can uh, we we can try to make a PO box work. But if you put something, and we'll probably be contacting you. Um, so we'll go number one. I'm gonna drive you know, Helena, Montana. Five nine six zero two or something like that. Okay. So as you can see at this point, we have filled out the top of that information. That's all you have to do for that up there. Now, if you have multiple LPCs, you can put in multiple LPCs information. And again, an LPC is a local program coordinator. Um, so that is the person who submits all your paperwork to state games, person or peoples. Now, the person I want in particular is the person who is the main that'll be gathering this information for scores, because if I need to contact you at any point to get these scores cleared up, um, then I need to know who I should be calling. All right, so information available on this form then. Um, so we got little notes throughout the form that please make sure you read and recognize those. The first thing is we submit this form at both due dates. So we'll hit the due dates in a second, but submit this form this form always goes to me, Scott Held at sheld at somt.org. Now, all other paperwork, this would include, you know, medical forms, volunteer background checks, protective behaviors, consents, COVID paperwork is, is the, you know, the most, you know, recent and relevant probably. All of that paperwork goes to Richie Whitney at the state office, and that's our Whitney at somt.org and you can see it when you look at this document it's spelled out right there so you can copy and paste it in your email if you need to now this so again this form comes to me all other paperwork for participating goes to Richie all right so next note I have here is all sections shaded green are due on the preliminary scores due date which is going to be October 8th of course of 2021 because we're not going to have a year and a half basketball challenge or anything like that but it's going to be due on October 8th that form will be due to me now all sections shaded orange in this document are going to be due at the final scores due date which is going to be on November 12th of 2021 so as we make our way through the document, you'll see green sections, you'll see orange sections. Now, the last note on this front page is directions on how to fill out this form available in video form are available at that link. And that is the video that we're sitting here and I'm recording right now. 
Um, that that's going to be available right there at that link, and it's just going to direct link you up to YouTube to the Special Mix Montana YouTube page, so you can review this. All right, next section here. Now, this section there are three sections to this registration form. Now, they're all color coded, of course. You know, which is which is keep helps keep things organized when it comes to paper. Um, if you if you have a black and white printer and you're printing off hard copies, you might just have to uh, kind of take a look at it and figure it out. But for on the computer or with a color printer, they are color coded. So the first section is going to be in blue, as you can see right here, the volunteer section. That's going to be blue, um, which is why it's typed in blue there with that little gray background. Okay, the second section is the participant and individual skills section. That's going to be in purple. And then the third section is going to be the doubles and team section, which is in pink. Now we will get there in a second. So that first section, volunteer section, list every registered volunteer that will be assisting during the 2021 fall basketball challenge. So any registered volunteer that you wish to have, that you've actually submitted paperwork for, that'll be coaching, that'll be volunteering, that'll be an LPC. Um, if they're forming any function on the team, we should be getting them registered. Um, with us, they should do a background check and submit their information. And then in addition, we're going to do first and last name. So we'll use me again as as an example. We'll say Scott Held Jr. or something. We'll say there's Scott Held Jr., which there definitely isn't, just in case anyone's wondering, but Scott Held Jr. right there. And we'll say the role is volunteer. Now, if it doesn't fit, just keep typing. Oh, and I spelled that wrong, but it should squish it in there, and I'll go back and check that later. Okay, so we would just type that in. Next person you put in, we'll say JV Wood, coach, so on and so forth. Now there are 36 slots in there. If you need more slots, there's a couple teams that might just go ahead and add a couple more lines and then fill in those names underneath. But just put in their first name, last name, and role. And as it says right here, that is due at the preliminary scores date on October 8th because this section is shaded green just as it shows up above. All right, section number two after we've made our way through our registered volunteers. Section number two. Now this is the participant section. Try to zoom in a little bit here. Is that purple is a little dark. Participant section and our individual skills section. So the main section it's for participants and then individual skills is going to be our second part. So this is where this form starts to get a little bit more complex, but still pretty straightforward. So for the participant section, we are going to list every participant on the delegation and the levels they're participating in. Now, when I say participant, I mean athletes and unified partners. That's it. All the other coaches and volunteers should be up above. So this should just be athletes and unified partners in this section. Now, the sub part of this section is it's an individual skills section. So this section of the form also serves as the preliminary and final score section for the individual skills events in levels one, two, three, and four. See the notes below on how to fill out this section. Now, all of you should have access to the games information packet, which was sent out to your LPCs and is available on the Special Olympics Montana website. Okay, that shows you how to set up and score and operate every single level and every single station inside of those levels. So you should be able to see what events are available at each level. All right, note number one for the participant individual skills section. Note one, under the individual level, you guys see right here, I'm kind of scrolling through, hopefully you can keep up with that, where it says individual level, list the level that the participant is competing in. Select from levels one, two, three, or four. Now, the reason you'd select from one, two, three, or four is because those are the levels that have some individual skills events. So level one, of course, you know, is going to be our compete from home. Level two is going to be modified skills. Level three is traditional individual skills, and level four is our high performance individual skills. So you only select level four in this section if you're not participating in level four doubles. Now, as a reminder, level four has both individual skills and double skills. Level five has uh, three man skills, so a three man team skills. And level six has five man team skills. Okay, so if a participant is not competing in an individual event, leave this space blank. Now, something I'll probably add to this document as a reminder is your athletes can compete in one individual event 
and one doubles or team event. They don't have to compete in both, but they have, they can compete in both if they so choose, um, or they can just compete in one. So if you have an athlete that isn't competing in individual, but is in team, we're just gonna leave this individual section here blank. All right, note number two, under doubles slash team level, which is right here, list the level the participant is competing in. Select from levels four, five, or six. Only select level four if not participating in level four as an individual. So if your athlete is participating in level four doubles, you would put a four right here, where you see the six currently. Now list team name under the team name section for both doubles and team participants. If a participant is in level four doubles under team name, it is permissible to list their teammates name. And I noticed that needs an apostrophe right now, I believe. Do not do this for levels five and six, instead create a team name. Now the goal here is to have us be able to keep your athletes organized and make sure that you have the correct number of athletes on a team. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally we'll see teams in five man divisions, for example, that have four athletes on them. And obviously we need five for a five man division, right? So what we do here as an example, we have our doubles and team level. So in this case, our example athlete, LeBron James, role as an athlete, doubles and team levels, level six, and then they put in their team name, which is not as good as Jordan. So we just go ahead and we fill that out right there. And since these are green sections, keep in mind the last two notes I went through, since the, these are green sections, they are due on October 8th. Alrighty, so note three, after entering all participants, continue on to the next section. This is where doubles and team scores will be entered. So if you have doubles and teams, move on to the next section, which is that pink section. If you have just individuals, you don't have to move on to the next section. Alrighty, note number four, when submitting scores, submit the individual's single best score to the date. So that October day, eighth date, where you have to enter your preliminary score here for, you know, you put in your end LeBron James's individual level is four, you would submit a score that we division on at the state office. What you're going to submit is LeBron's best score. So for, you know, LeBron might have done level four high performance individual skills he might have gone through that in practice 22 times but on this let's say the third time that lebron did individual skills that was the best score lebron achieved through the entire course of the practice season that's when he got a 47. everyone else was 43 39 all those back and forth all we want is the single best score that lebron james has achieved over the course of the season up to that october 8th due date now it stays the same for this section at the final scores due date, which is, you know, after the October 8th date, we'll put your athletes in divisions. And then on the November 12th date is when we'll have final scores and we finalize those divisions and then send awards out afterwards, right? So in this case here, we're still looking for the single best score that LeBron has achieved for the entire season. And in this example that you see here, and we'll show you a different example down below, but in this example that you see here, LeBron, the best score LeBron ever achieved was 47 through the entire season. So that was at the October 8th date, and LeBron never improved after that October 8th date. So LeBron was still a 47. Now, if LeBron had achieved, let's say, a 60, you would replace that with a 60 right there. But up to this point, LeBron hadn't improved at all. So we had just had a typed in a... 47 because it stayed the same. So you would go ahead and do that. This entire section. Now make sure to continue scrolling if you have teams because we do have a bit. It's a big individual section. I think I'll have like 79 cells after LeBron here. It's going to say 80. But yeah, see, it says 80, but there's 79 cells there. So it's, it's a lot. OK. So the next section is the doubles and team section. Now, this doubles and team section includes uh, what you want to do is you want to put in the participants level and team name so that they match up above. Now, if you recall up at the top, LeBron James was in level six, which is five man skills or five person skills on the team name, not as good as Jordan. So if you go down here. And this section. You now see that there's. The team name, not as good as Jordan, 
and teammate one name is LeBron James. So you're just going to reflect that LeBron is in level one or in the in individual skills up above. But also what we're trying to gather here down in the bottom in this section is which athletes are on what teams and what that team score is. So what you have up above in your participant and individual skills section should reflect what's down below here in this doubles and team section. Let's go through the notes first and then I'll continue showing how we fill that out. Note one. So we're only going to be completing this section, the pink section. For participants who are in level four doubles, level five, three person skills and level six, five person skills. Note number two, when filling in teams for level four doubles, leave the last three spaces blank. So obviously if you're doing doubles, you don't have a five person team. So you just leave these last three spaces blank. For level five, which is three person skills, you would obviously, since you only have three, not five, you would just leave these last two spaces blank. Alrighty, of course we have the note here. This will, up above there was this the note as well, but we are going to link the games information packet into this registration document or this preliminary and final scores form. We're going to link the games info packet in here. That way you have direct access to it to make sure that your scores aren't you know, tremendously different from what you're supposed to be submitting because that will prompt a follow up um, from the state office to make sure you're getting you have the correct scores for your team. So we obviously, of course, want to make sure that everyone's having a fair competition opportunity, even though we're not able to get together in a big state environment. All right, note number four, again, we're going to submit the team's best scores to date. Same similar to what we do with individuals and note five. When submitting level four scores, we're going to take teammate one's best score and teammate two's best score and add them together. So if teammate one scored a 20 and teammate score two scored a 30, their team score is going to be a 50. We're not going to submit separate scores for doubles. They're combined together as a, in a simple addition. A plus B equals C. That's it. Alrighty, now when you're filling out, you see the example form here. When we're filling this out, we're going to go ahead and put in the team name. In this case, it's not as good as Jordan. Then, of course, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, teammate number one name up above, we had LeBron James and LeBron James was an athlete. So we go ahead and fill in their role. You can see the arrows pointing down here. So teammate number one name is LeBron James. Their role or his role or is athlete. And you're going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the team. So in this specific case, this was level six, five person skills. So we filled in all five teammates. So LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird. We went in, gave them their role, athlete, 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 unified partner, unified partner. We listed their team's level, of course, level six. Right here, the green section. Again, the entire green section is due October 8th. We put in their preliminary score. So as a team, they scored 70. For their level five or their level six skills. That was their preliminary score. Now, as you can see here in the orange section, which is due November 12th, which of course is the final score due date, they did improve three points. So they went from a 70 to a 73. Now, all of these cells should be merged and ready for you to use. If you have any problems with that, just go ahead and make it so it's still legible for us um, at the state office. So we can go ahead and jiggle around the cells if you need to, since this is an Excel document. Now, for those of you that don't use Microsoft products, now we're talking, you know, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint. Let's like, let's say you're on an Apple computer or you're using Google Docs or something like that. We need to make sure that when we submit these forms to me at the state office, that they need to be accessible for me. So as an example, I see a lot of Google Docs forms submitted, which is great. Big fan of Google Sheets. They're, it's fantastic. I use it in front of personal life. Love them. OK, we need to make sure that permissions are enabled so that I can access them. So you need to give s held at SOMT.org permission to access it or make it so I can download it at least and save it. Because um, sometimes then I'm going to have to get back to you if I can't access it. Now, for those of you that use um, Apple products, I believe there's an app you can use that will transfer it because Apple product sheets forms aren't able to be read by Microsoft products, which is what the Special Olympics Montana office uses. So we'll either do that or turn it into a PDF and send me the PDF and that works just fine because I can go through and read the document as well. Now, if you were going to scan, um, scan and fax these in, um, let's make sure 
that before you scan and fax them, if at all possible, you turn this entire document white after you fill it out, because when you scan and submit it, it comes through as this weird gray and I end up having to call you because I can't actually read the document then. So if you're going to scan and fax, let's try to make sure that we can we turn this entire document to white. And all you would do to do that is highlight the whole document. Go up here to the paint section. And go to no fill and you see how it turns everything white. That's all you have to do to do that. You can also mail these in. Now, if we're going to mail these, they need to be sent in um, to P.O. Box 3507, and that's Great Falls, Montana 59403. That is the state office's P.O. Box, and since this is a, a piece of paper, it should be able to make its way in. Um, but of course, email is the best way to do that because it comes directly to me at sl.sot.org. Uh, if you have any other questions about submitting these forms, please let me know. And if you have any questions on this form at all, please feel free to let me know. Again, it's 406-216-5327 or sheld at somt.org. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, and otherwise, you know, I'm hope, hoping and wishing that you guys have, have the best basketball season possible. And we're right there with you and hoping we can, uh, you know, continue to move forward, move forward with our sports and continue to off good, offering good quality opportunities to our volunteers coaches, parents, and most importantly, our unified partners and our athletes. So thank you all for everything you do and feel free to reach out at any time.